big one, contractual slavery. Now, before we go any further, we must get into what is called etymology. Etymology is the history and study of word origins. And before you can truly understand any type of information, you must understand the language it is being communicated in. For example, most people think that black means dark and white means light. But in actuality, black comes from the word blake or bleak or bleach, which means pale or blank. And white is the German word gwit, which is wheat. And as you know, wheat is brown. But both words in reality really mean just void of color. This is a part of the linguistic bondage or the slavery of words I mentioned earlier. In later videos, we'll go a lot deeper into the subject, but for right now, we'll just touch on it just briefly. Like black and white have come to mean something totally different in colloquial language, which is just everyday slang. Most words that people use today don't mean anything near what they think they mean, especially in law terminology. For instance, the word driver in legal terms means a person who was paid to take someone back and forth along the highway. And a passenger is a person who pays the driver to take them. Now, if you're not engaged in any commerce or business along the highway, you're not supposed to need a driver's license. Now, the word color, which means the appearance of, as distinguished from that which is real. So black, in legal terms, is a color. And by calling yourself this, you're actually saying you're not real. Now, another legal term, minority, means infant, or one who is under the legal age of competency. And the definition of infant is lunatic, or a person of unsound mind. So again, by using words and terms and not knowing the intended meaning, places you in sort of a prison, where you become the warden and guard, able to free yourself, but not doing it because you don't know you're the prisoner. You actually think you're in charge. That is real slavery. It's not placing your body in constraints. It's your mind that's incarcerated. Another- During the past 200 years, while the peoples of the world gradually were winning their political freedom from monarchies, the major banking families of the world were nullifying the trend toward representative government by setting up new dynasties of political control, but behind the scenes in the form of international financial combines. These banking dynasties had learned that all governments, whether they be monarchies or democracies, must borrow money in times of emergency and that by providing such funds from their own private resources, with strings attached, of course, gradually they could bring both kings and democratic leaders under their control. Dr. Quigley believes that people should be more familiar with the identities of these clever banking dynasties. They include such names as Baring, Ambrose, Lazard, Erlanger, Warburg, Schroeder, Seligman, The Spires, Mirabeau, Malay, Fold, and above all, Rothschild and Morgan. It should be noted that while the Rothschilds and other Jewish families cooperated together in these ventures, this was by no means a Jewish monopoly, as some have alleged. Men of finance of many nationalities and many religious and non-religious backgrounds collaborated together to create this superstructure of hidden power. Its essence was not race, nor religion, nor nationality. It was simply a passion for control over other human beings. Dr. Quigley identifies this group simply as the international bankers. It's a lot of information out here on this topic. My brain is hurting. There's a lot of information out here on this topic. My question is, if the system is set up to enslave people, because that's what I'm, I'm is that what I'm hearing in these videos? Absolutely. Why? G is, is government slavery? I, let me just come right out. If you're governed by a government, uh, participating in a society, are you a functioning slave if you're following the rules, the laws of that society? Uh, Jeff? Uh, Jeff's here? Not, not, not necessarily. Say more, Jeff. Okay. Um, I, you just have to be uh, um, aware that there is a parent-child relationship. Ooh, damn. Okay? My children are not slaves. They are just subject to my word 
They are subject to my ways until they get to where they can do and say shit on their own. Prime example, I give money to my younger children, to my older children. That's loans because you spend, <laughs> you spend, you trying, you trying to get a fade, you trying to get your car wash, some weed, and some pussy, just like me. So nah, my eight year old ain't trying to get no weed. He trying to get books. So I give him money. Well, as a people, you stupid. When you, when you get to a certain, the, the the issue is that we want to be out from under this parent-child relationship with this government because they're shitty parents. Mm. Because they are shitty, abusive, <laughs> uh, 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 they play fa favoritive playing parents, okay? If I had 20 million kids and I was killing 8 million of them, then you would uh, understand, you would have to understand the 8 million wanting to get out from under my thumb. Dr. G? Tell me if you agree or disagree with this. As long as there are governments and as long as there are corporations, there's going to be a pressure to get crap done at the cheapest way you can get it done. Mm. And so uh, you're, you're going to try and find a group that gets all the crap done that you don't want to do at the least cost to you, and that's never going to change. One of the things that I hear you know, in shows like this is, is legitimate... Uh, a righteousness, not self-righteousness, because you, you're standing up for something. But I, I hear legitimate righteousness, and and what I often hear, and I think, and I want to address why there's, I think, so many more blacks in prison than uh, other populations. When you are powerless against injustice and you're angry about it and you have nothing to lose, it takes very little to push you over the brink. Mm -hmm. And until you can cause other people, like people with my skin, to feel what it's like to feel uh, powerless against injustice <coughs> and have nothing to lose, uh, you're not going to get us to give a damn. You know what's interesting? You know what's interesting? And I want Joseph, Yusuf and, and, and Kevin to really speak to this. First, I want y'all to speak to the fucking birth certificate. And what that mean, right? Secondarily, is the one percent operating in not even American? Because now, because of these big super corporations who are through the TPP, right, are their own governments. And get into that shit for real. Let me just say this: Are the one percent operating like? A small group of Merovingians. <laughs> Remember how the Merovingian <laughs> operated in the Matrix? He was in the Matrix, but the Matrix didn't operate. He operate. He operated within the Matrix like Neo. He did. Like, oh, I've seen your predecessors. <laughs> I will survive you too. <laughs> right, that motherfucker knew. Right. <laughs> Who are you chasing, motherfucker? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know. <laughs> That Almost. motherfucker was like, oh, you have some skill. I see. <laughs> <laughs> right? So my point is, where everybody else is kind of blind sheep in the matrix, not really understanding that, A, money is debt. You, you chase in debt when you chase money. That is a philosophy. That is a belief system. Do you understand? But the 1% understand monopoly money as it really is. This is fiat money. It's not really real. It's not the money. It's the power behind the money. That the one percent happen, and, and and you speak about it a lot when you talk about public versus private. That one percent private shit. Was it you? No, it was my cousin. My cousin is a pilot, so we flying in his little plane to go to one of my son's games when he was in the tenth grade. They, that's when they made this playoff push. We fly into a private airport ain't no tsa ain't no security nope. you just roll just Jones get off and it's all hey how y'all doing you want some cookies and some apples and some it's juice like, and it's, it's, it's all great it's like a car that goes thirty five thousand feet and 400 miles an hour right so there's public and private i understand that but the one percent are operating like the merovingian they are they're able to manipulate the matrix and while the sheep they have no idea speak to us about the fucking uh, the money system, monetary system, the, uh, the, the birth certificate. Who wants? Who you wants to tackle? You tackle birth certificate. You tackle uh, uh, the monetary system. 
Let's do that. Birth certificate, go. <laughs> well, the birth certificate is a contract that most people don't. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally a contract that yes. your parents put you in. Birth certificate came around, came about around the 1930s, and it was from when America went bankrupt. They had, and they went bankrupt to the international bankers or the people who own the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is not a governmental agency. It's a private bank owned it's by- It's a private corporation. Private corporation, excuse me. Does um, it have more power than the U.S. government? Uh, yes, in absolutely. Some, in some <laughs> absolutely. The people who own the Federal Reserve are those Rothschilds, Rockefellers, all those people they were talking about. Mm -hmm. And if I make the money, I don't need money. So that's how they control everything. So the government borrows money from the Federal Reserve and have to Wait, pay. hold on. If I make the money, I don't need the money. No. That statement in and of itself, motherfucker. Can Go I, ahead, finish. Okay. <laughs> I got something for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the government borrows money from the Federal Reserve uh, at interest. And so the people, what happened in, in 1930, with the, the people or the bankrupt or the, the government went bankrupt. And so they had nothing else to promise or to repay the loans from the Federal Reserve but the people. So they basically pledged the people, the work of the people. And this is how you get the birth certificate. The birth certificate literally is a, uh, it's a contract for your, for your work, basically. Mm -hmm. So once that, that contract or that birth certificate, once it's signed, it, it's basically an, uh, what's called a, um, a negotiable instrument. It's traded over the stock market. If you try to go get your real birth certificate, you can try to order it, and you can see some of, sometimes they'll have stamps on the back of it of all the banks that it's passed through. Damn. So that, that contract is the initial contract. What kind of paper is it you. printed on? It's printed on the same paper as money. <laughs> and if you get your birth certificate, it'll, it'll, sh it'll say at the bottom if, in small letters, Federal Reserve. It'll say on there, the Federal Reserve. We wow. own your ass. Wow. Wow. So, so birth canal. The birth. Well, can that? Well, All the, of the languaging around it. Well, Registration. I'm talking about Admiralty Maritime Law. This is, where, wow. this is what you're talking about. Just like a ship has a birth. Right. Wow. So to subvert the Constitution, which is the law of the land, they had to create Admiralty Maritime Law. Admiralty is basically, it comes from uh, the Arabic emir. So, prince. Or, huh? The prince. Yeah, or commander. Yes. Yeah, and so... The, the word was used to be Amir al, which means commander of, and it didn't, didn't necessarily mean commander of the sea. However, they did, in, in Spain, they did have command, uh, um, Amir al bar, which means commander of the sea. Then from that, uh, the British took that and just rolled with it, added an AD in front of it, and that's how you get admiralty. And specifically, it's for uh, the, law of the, the law of the water. Mm. And that's commerce. Commerce. Well, mar maritime law is the law of commerce on the water. Admiralty just means commander. So when you're in court and you have, you're in the admiralty court, the judge is the admiral in that, in that vessel wow. or in, in that thing. And he's, that's why he's able to command you and do whatever, and do whatever he wants. Wow. Joseph? Debt. Uh -oh. Money. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I guess I would have to you kind of like uh, segue from his point about the birth. Yes, the birth certificate is a negotiable. Speak, uh, speaking in the mic. The birth certificate is a negotiable document of title. Um, at the bottom, you will have American Bank Note Company. American Bank Note Company only deals with stocks and bonds. What? Mine is a uh, mine says American Bank Note Company at the bottom. So do the ones here in California. If you go and get them, if you go get the long form of the birth certificate, but. Yes, it goes from the uh, vital statistics to the Department of Commerce, from the Department of Commerce to the Department of Treasury to the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation to a holding company called Seed Corporation. Seed means to relinquish, like to succeed from something. C E D. In the mic. It means to relinquish something. So you're relinquishing something. But the thing is that I want to read to y'all first of all. But wait, let me ask. Go ahead. Because you're saying something really heavy. We have a misnomer, in my opinion of what slavery really is. They paint a picture that slavery has to do with black people and, and chains and Did getting you your see 12 ass whooped and, and all that. Did yeah. you see the movie 12 Years a Slave? Yeah. Pay it, go back and watch it again and pay attention to the part when they were in the house and uh, they were taking the, uh, the woman away from her children mm -hmm. and she was going crazy and he tried to get the, the children to go with him. And he said, look, you need to take this a go. He gave him a note. 
And also when the uh, when the slave when he transferred the slave to another plantation, he said, I already sold your debt. Wow. Uh, go back and watch the movie. All right. The thing that they were doing then is the same thing that they're doing now. When they put you in the criminal justice system, they fill out a bond on you and they sell that bond. It is no different. They are doing the exact same thing <laughs> that they have done for the last 200 years. That's how they sell you. They just move the they just move slavery to the prison industrial complex, and they have not changed not one bit. Do not tell me anything about these people. They just got more sophisticated. Uh, I think it's very sick for a group of people to think that they can enslave another group of people. And they got this thing called Malum and Say and Malum Prohibitum Crimes. Wait, 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 wait. All right, go ahead. Because you hear the music, we got to wrap it, right, and right, then we'll come back. I know I roll. God this, damn right. it! We talk about the legal matrix. How do we avoid it? Because apparently, every nigga in America is Neo. <laughs> <laughs> they trying to get Neo. Yep. Uh, hey, we'll be back at 2.2. So what morning show? We're trying to navigate this business here. We'll be back at 2.2. As fast as I can, this show is supposed to be, its, it's objective is to wake up those who may be sleeping to inform those who are awake. Um, the sad reality I've come to <laughs> is that there are some people who are happy in their slumber. Um, for the wealthy, money is a byproduct of efficient use of time and resources. Mm. For us, money is the means to the end. For them, it's just a byproduct. Almost like when you buy a shirt and you have the, <coughs> the pins and the clips and the plastic that's on the shirt, you got that because it came with the shirt. That's how they have money. They're not tripping on the pins. You're the only one tripping, oh wow, look at this, I got some pins and some plastic. No, that's not how rich people get down. That's not how wealthy people think of money. Um, something earlier was said, if I make money, I don't need money. Think about that. How much at home does it cost you to go in your refrigerator and get some orange juice? It doesn't. It's your orange juice. You already bought it. It's yours. <laughs> it's your orange juice. Now... You have, to, you, you, you have to get your brain away from money being anything other than a measure of intelligent decision long enough in one line. That's all money is. Uh, people who really have a lot of it, the people who really have a lot of it, never take pictures with it. Um, Ooh. <laughs> um, you got that on. Damn. <laughs> sisters, question, question. <laughs> sisters, when the dollar collapses, what will you use to judge your man by? <laughs> um, Bam. <laughs> it's just some shit. And this is not, it, you know what? If that Zoe nigga, ran down the block. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> if, if that nigga think he's slick or that nigga think he know what he's talking about is what's in your mind right now, I'm not talking to you. Go back to your sleeping. I'm talking to those of you who every now and then like Morpheus talked to Neo, is, that, is, is it driving you mad? Is there a splinter in your mind? Yeah, like that's what this is about today. <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to get you to understand that you basically are paying for rich white dude's gas, airplane gas, oh with God. your very flesh. All right, I'm done. It's so much here. It's so much here. We got to so do. Meaty. We have to do multiple topics of this, right? Mm -hmm. Multiple episodes. Because he, he, here's the reality. Here's the reality. We love our women, right? Oh, yeah. But our women are women. Estrogen, building. Well, what do estrogen, I need to build with materials. What are the materials? The rules of the society in which you live in. Wow. Those are the materials the sisters right. are building with. Those are, the, those are the materials by which they judge us as architects. Absolutely. But if you look at the system and how it's designed, 
It is designed to put you into slavery. What is one of the number one functioning uh, tools used for slavery in America? And you don't think it's slavery. Propaganda? Family. Oh, fa oh yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. We got to propagate marriage. Marriage is the number one indicator of wealth in America, but it's also the number one indicator. Uh, divorce is the number one indicator of poverty. The marriage rate or the divorce rate is over 50 percent. Right. This is why a sister named uh, a woman named Helen Smith writes a book, Men on Strike, because she's saying now marriage and family and all that shit is a bad deal for men because ultimately they get caught up in the system. Why well, you think prostitution <laughs> is illegal? Real prostitution. Quick, hold on just right. a second. Prostitution is illegal. Why? Not because the system has a problem with you uh, getting pussy that you pay for. They have a problem with all the shit you don't pay for when you buy pussy direct. Uh, dates. Uh, roses, uh, uh, the, the the door hinge industry. You know, you open a door for a lady. The door hinge you industry. Your car, your car, all that. You ain't got to pay for that. Just real quick, the etymology of family. So all of you guys keep talking about, oh, this is my fam, this is my fam, all my family. The etymology of family means the number of household slaves under one roof. It's the Latin, from the Latin familus. Husband. Husband is the house bond. It's literally a person or who was bonded to the house from the from the la the landlord or he, so he like he like the, the foreman of the house. He's the foreman of the house. He was the serf who basically the serf is a land slave a per, uh, uh, is a yeah. slave that's connected to the land who can't leave. A husband was the house bond. He was basically he ran the land, took took care of it for the lord, mm -hmm. and then his wife, which only means woman. He was basically bound to her, and he took care of all the rest of the slaves in the house, which is the family. Right, right, right. So now let's understand why it's important to keep you dumb. Let's understand why it's important to dilute knowledge. We live in the information age, and this is why they're trying to lock down the Internet. Yep. Right? Well, what do you mean, too much information? We can't have all of this information <laughs> flowing through to the slaves. If they start to understand who we are and the agenda and what we've been trying to do, this shit is bigger than just one country. That's the new world order. It's bigger than just one country. Right. This is globalization. Absolutely. So while niggas is trying to live that ideal dream, my house, my picket fence, my family, what we believe in, the values of family, they don't understand that they're fucking slaves. Speak to it. No, no, no. Let me give it to that and then come back to you. I, I, you know what? On our show, High Frequency Radio, y'all, go to blogtalkradio.com. Okay, commercial. We discussed this. <laughs> Shit. Hey, I got to give him a plug. <laughs> I get a chance to speak. I might as well plug myself. The thing is this, is that we teach on our show trust. Your family is your business, okay? Mm. Families run the world. Mm. It's not governments that run the world. They're families that run the world. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, uh, the uh, DuPonts, the, uh, yeah. you know, these people right here, Warbirds, mm -hmm. all these other names that you hear. And they still exist, don't they? they a lot of people exist. don't know. And, they, and they, 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 a lot of people don't know because they're private and they run their business through what are called private trust. So one of the uh, pieces of information that has been kept from us is the science of operating your family as a business. And you do that through private trust. All right. They have problems just like you do. Uh, you do. But how they are able to keep their families together is the wealth keeps the family together. Because if you don't act right in the family, then you will, will, won't have mm -hmm. any part in the wealth. That's right. All right. So mm -hmm. they do that through trust. So uh, I can make you marry who you want, who I want you to marry, because if you don't, you're just going to get cut out of this couple of billion dollars over here. You're going <laughs> to yep. go to school where I tell you to go to school because if you don't, you're just going to get cut yep. out of this couple of billion dollars right. right here. And this is how they keep the family together and how they aggregate capital and invest capital mm. is through trust. Okay? And that's what we got to get back to learning is how to operate your business, your family, because as long as they destroy your family, they won't ever have any competition. Now let me tell you what's beautiful about that. Wait, go to Jeff Brown and then I'll come back. Uh, couple of things. Something you said earlier, Doc, about um, us needing to know, uh, us needing to get people in your skin to feel what we feel. Um, to and, and I love you, but I think that's incredibly unnecessary because it's about 
appealing to the the compassion of an aggressor. And from a dude who got his ass whooped coming up, that mm -hmm. don't work. Aggressors only respect equal and greater aggression. Now, with regard to family values, um, what we are discussing right now are family values because we are definitively breaking down what the words family and husband and wife really mean, which means if we're really discussing va family values, what the fuck is that other shit? So let me come back. Point I'm trying to make here. You remember that scene, Malcolm X? Get your hand out my pocket. <laughs> Let's understand propaganda. Propaganda is so, you can't have propaganda unless you have black and white thinking. You can't. All intelligent people know that there are multiple right answers to every problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All intelligent people know that. Yep. Black and white thinking does not. It's this is the right way only. Yep. So when, when you are socialized to think in that context, it is easy to manipulate you. Absolutely. Allah is the only way, goddammit. <laughs> oh, we got him. We, we know how to polarize him to make him jump out his skin. So you remember, get your hand on my pocket. Yep. <coughs> that couldn't have worked amongst intelligent folk. No dis I'm not dissing any organization. I'm just saying how people are socialized to operate. If I'm a Democrat, this is the only way. If I'm a Republican, this is the only way. So that imbalance of flexibility in thought scalability in thought keeps you locked in a certain thought process so you call your god jesus hey great then no. we got you so we, we know what power you we have. know how to we know how we to know how to manipulate right so let's come back to our people get your hand out my pocket propaganda mm. right thinking a certain way like i believe this system can work if we start to vote that's the <laughs> only but do you understand what i'm saying yep. So, yeah. so you buy into it yeah. because it's been sold to you as a solution, as the best solution. Voting has nothing to do with it, right? <laughs> we talk about all of these families that are interrelated and intermingled, and then when you do the research, you find out that all the presidents are related. Yep. So the, the American presidency, in a way, it's is a equivalent family. to the European aristocracy, which you can't go anywhere in the European aristocracy without, you can't be a part of it without being related. Absolutely. You little young kids in Britain don't great up, so, wake, walk, uh, wake up talking about they're going to be king. Right, so because you have black and white thinking, you think the process of voting works because you've been sold that as a solution. Right? But then when, when you look at how African American men are socialized in America, if an African American man shows aggression in the classroom, He's ostracized. Get your ass out of here. And guess who they're teaching how to do the same ostra uh, 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 expelling? Women. Women. There's African-American sisters in there going, when they get out of pocket, kick them out. <laughs> right? They're learning that too. So f follow what I'm saying here. Okay. You don't want to follow? Go ahead. No, no. No, you're good. No, no, no. You're good. I, I can pick it up. No, because I, I, I was just thinking about what Jeff said, because I think Jeff is right. I, I think if you're expecting people who have power to sort of become sympathetic, they're not going to have it. So it's never going to happen. So delete what I said. But I, I've just been thinking about, so how do you take charge of your life and take control of your life that and that no one else can take away from you? So I had a thought. That is it. great. And so and, 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 and tell me where I'm wrong, because I, I think this is just the reality of how you get to be wealthy on your own, on your own control. Absolutely. I, I think here's what you have to decide. Who are the people in the world that have money? Mm -hmm. And what is it that they got to have? Mm -hmm. Not what they need or want. What do they got to have? Because if someone's got to have it, you don't <coughs> have to persuade them. And what I've discovered is uh, what you can sell to is fear or greed. The problem with selling to fear is it doesn't last. You know, you take uh, that away and then people don't want to think about it. And it's a sad state of a fear is what you want to do is who are the people with the, all the money who want who always want to get more sooner? That's this, all this, they want. This is big. More sooner. And if you can figure out what it is that they got to have that will get them more sooner, you can take charge of your life. Mm -hmm. But you have to put yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I have a, a new 
website. I have a company, the Goulston Group, and we it's called We Create Gotta Have It because I got sick hmm. and tired of trying to convince knuckleheads mm. who will not stay convinced, and I got so sick and tired of it, I don't mm. even want to try to convince convinced. people who want something <laughs> mm -hmm. because that won't last. And I said, if I could figure out what people gotta have, you just make them aware of it, and you know how you've created gotta have. People say, you can do that? Your stuff does that? You you get that done? Wow. And, and in fact, when you're trying to drill down into people like all of us who have ADD and we're preoccupied, you know you've you've created gotta have it when they're tweeting and whatever, and someone says, what do you say? Right, right. So you said something very big. It reminds me of something Quincy Jones said to me about the hip-hop culture. He said, listen, you guys... Uh, uh, uh. I got you. He said, listen, you guys are doing it right, getting your money and giving your guys jobs. You're doing it right. He said, but once you get money and once you give your family and your people jobs, now the real test is to go out there and see if your money has any power. That fucking rained. So you're saying it right. It's not wealth. Wealth is not money. Wealth no, it's a is power. Of doing it right and doing it right power. in a way Control. that the, yeah. they, this, they, is, this is different. Money. They, We're end users in this society. Me, money is to power as sweat is to strength. Let me. Re, let me you, you, oh, well, sweat is not strength. Sweat is a byproduct of the use of strength. And your money. That's what your money that's, represents. That's what your money represents. It ain't you, you, okay. I had to explain this to a friend of mine mm -hmm. who does not understand that everybody don't want your money. You can hit Powerball to, uh, to Wednesday, <laughs> and you can't move over off a of Highland listen, and Third because they ain't going to take your money. The way this system is designed, they will give you money before they give you knowledge. Ouch. Matter of fact, it works best that way for them. I'd rather make you rich than make you small than to make you intellectually wealthy. I just want to read something real quick. Um, Dr. Goldstein, he was saying, what do they want? They pretty much want control, but they understand that they can't force you. See, slavery or what's called uh, involuntary servitude is forcing you. So this is why they put this in the 13th Amendment. So it says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, <coughs> excuse me, whereof the party shall have, excuse me, where, whereas the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place so basically, subject to jail, their jurisdiction. So basically, jail, jail, is legalized, is legalized slavery. slavery. But also, they put in neither slavery nor involuntary servitude. Isn't involuntary servitude slavery? It's the same thing. So why would they put it in there twice? Mm. Because voluntary servitude is what they wanted to implement. Mm. And that's with the 14th Amendment. Hmm. Under the 14th Amendment, you submit yourself. It says uh, a person, either a person who is born or naturalized in the United States shall be a citizen or... A, uh, or what's the, what's the, hold on, I got it right but Wait, here. doesn't doesn't corporations fall under the 14th Amendment too? They use the 14th, yes, because there was, a, there was a case that created, that made corporations persons. And so under mm. that, they were able to use the 14th Amendment because they're a legal person. So the 14th Amendment. Uh, so corporations have all the rights of a regular person. Of a regular, most, yeah. most, most cases that use the 14th Amendment have been corporations. Because wow. they're legal persons. The 14th Amendment was created. No, no, no. Give you a mic. You got speaking in that mic, goddammit. You know, the 14th Amendment was created to uh, enfranchise legal fictions or, or fictitious entities. A fictitious, a fictitious person. Entity. That's and a corporation, it, and that's right? And that's how black, blacks fell up under that, under the umbrella of the federal government through that. Um, but I'm going I'm to I'm put it like this. My, my view on all of this has changed. The more I studied law, I don't see things the same way I used to see them. A lot of our problems are is that we depend on government. This is called a welfare state. And let me read this to y'all. Mm. And uh, Everybody is a welfare recipient. If you have a job, you're basically a welfare recipient. And I'll read this to you. It says, a system whereby the government undertakes to protect the health and well-being of its citizens, especially those in financial or social need, by means of grants, pensions, and other benefits, the foundations for the modern welfare state in U.S. were laid down by the New Deal programs of President, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So uh, after 1933, when they inst instituted the New Deal, if you got health care from the government, uh, unemployment, disability, 
uh, veterans benefits, if you're receiving anything from public school, anything from the government, you are a welfare recipient. The government, you're wow. supposed to be able to do this on your own because in 1933, the American people demonstrated to the whole world that they were incompetent, that they did not know how to take care of themselves. And they wow. The government to come in and help them. So when I come back, before 1933, we didn't have birth certificates, did we? No social security cards, none of that, right? No IRS? Nope. No Federal Reserve? Listen, when we come back, man, this is about to get ugly. Listen, living a normal, happy American dream requires you to be sleep, right? Sleep to a new style of slavery you never knew was slavery. When we come back, the voice, the What Morning Show will tell you more. Holla! Very soon, every American will be required to register their biological property. That's the birth certificate. They'll be required to register their biological property in a national system designed to keep track of the people and that will operate under the ancient system of pledging. By such methodology, we can compel people to submit to our agenda, which will affect our security as a chargeback for our fiat paper currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer not being able to work and earn a living. The sin. They will be our chattel. That means slaves, it means collateral. You're secured as collateral. They will be our chattel, and we will hold the security interest over them forever. By operation of the law merchant, under the scheme of secured transactions, Americans, by unknowingly or unwittingly, delivering the bills of lading to us will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent forever to remain economic slaves through taxation secured by their pledges the birth certificate they will be stripped of their rights and given a commercial value designed to make us profit and they will be none the wiser for not one man in a million could ever figure out our plans and if by accident one or two would figure it out, we have in our arsenal plausible deniability. After all, this is the only logical way to fund government, by floating liens and debt to the registrants in the form of benefits and privileges. This will inevitably reap us huge profits beyond our wildest expectations and leave every American a contributor to this fraud which we will call social insurance. Without realizing it, every American will insure us for any loss we may incur in this manner. Every American will unknowingly be our servant However begrudgingly, the people will become helpless and without any hope for their redemption, we will employ the high office of the president of our dummy corporation to foment this plot against America. Paper. When we create money, we have created an instrument of value that has no value of its own. And it's just as expensive or inexpensive to print the 20 as it is to print the 1. In January of 1913, in December of 1913, he signed the Federal Reserve Act, bringing the Federal Reserve system into place in America and did what Thomas Jefferson said must never happen. He took the control of the money away from the people by taking it away from the Congress and gave it to a group of private individuals who have to pay taxes on the money they loan the government. <laughs> how, how fucked up are our interpersonal relationships based off of 
ideas that were created to survive within this system of slavery. Ain't nothing going on but, but the rent. rent. <laughs> right? Right? Do, do, do the research on education. Do the research on education. A lot of those kids you call dumb are geniuses because they don't fit the fucking template of dumb down diddy. Yep. Right? This motherfucker is a genius sitting in there. Dumb I don't. Down diddy. I don't. This shit don't <laughs> click. What the fuck are y'all talking about? Absolutely. Because education is indoctrination. And you yep. got a fucking guru god sitting right here going, hmm? Down. Fuck John. Dumb down, Diddy. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. See, see John walk. Right. Uh, see Jane fart. What? Right. You got a fucking genius in here. Well, you know they only they say they only need about 15 percent of the people educated. The rest of the 85 yeah. percent just need to be mindless workers. Oh my God! Have you seen what what, what but, goes but on do, in but, elementary school? Yeah. Go ahead. They're making drones. That's what I was trying to explain to my wife. These okay. That's the difference between public and private school. Private school is for the people who are going to be operating mm -hmm. the public, public school drones. Yep. That's it. That's it. Right. Somebody knows so, public so, and private. So, so I ask Somebody again. Somebody just knows public and private. Again. So I ask again. <laughs> I ask again. Ladies, brothers, what's a good black woman? What's a good black man? According to the rules <laughs> of rules. today. What, what I, the fuck is that? Would I have to have? Would I'd have to actually have, have had one of those too. <laughs> I got one. Of them. But my point. But my point is. My point is. If you objectively <laughs> go through what the criteria is today that determines one. Yes. You'll see that your beliefs are all coping mechanisms to survive within this society, and you're unaware that this society is designed to make you slaves. You're either slave to God. You're slave to money, you're slave to your education, or all three, and or all three working together. And the whole system is designed to have you functioning at a high level in all three. You, you know. So, so we're talking about all the cops and 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 uh, uh, other professionals that go to big churches that are deacons. They got your ass, huh? Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the way they put you in slavery now is because. They, ha they basically created a corporation out of you because if you understand law, no corporation can, can have business with a sovereign unless the sovereign initiates it. So they basically create, created a, a corporation out of you by turning your name into all capital letters. And so from doing that, if you, if you see any bill you get in, in the mail, it'll all have all capital letters. What is that letters. called legally? Straw man? No, that's uh, not a legal name for it. That's not the legal name for it. The legal name you say for ends it. Legis, you can call it a. Uh, you can call it a, a well, fiction, a, a, a fictio jurist. Or it's called whatever. capitis diminutio maxima, and this Meaning? is the definition of it: the highest, when the highest, most name. comprehensive hmm. loss of a, of status. This occurs. So when your when name, a man's hold on, pimp. So that's fuck just, that. You saying when your name come in the mail in all caps with a bill caps. on it? This is a bill. And that shit is all caps. You done fell off. You have lost your status. I don't. I don't look at it like that. Fuck. I, 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 let, me, let me finish. Let me finish okay, what I was saying. So this is the de this is the legal definition of that. So the the highest, most comprehensive loss of status. This occurred when a man's condition was changed from one of freedom to one of bondage. When he became a slave, it swept away with it all rights of citizenship and all family rights. And then there's one dimin uh, capitis diminutio media, which basically means that you've lost all those rights, but your body is still free. So basically the people in jail is the maxima and the people who are running around here free is the media, is the minimum part. So when you say your body is free, what is the, what, what is the Latin term for, is that habeas corpus? What is that? Habeas corpus is Latin for bring the yeah, body bring the bo forth. Yeah. Bring the body yeah, forth. That shit is now suspended, right? No, habeas corpus is not suspended. No. They st you can still file habeas. Yeah. You can still do a twenty. You can still got to do statutory twenty two fifty four, twenty two fifty five, twenty two forty one, which is a pre. But let me let me just say this: when you in in, in the public, they, it's about taxes. Everything in the public is about taxes. If you look up the word tax, it's going to call it a charge. Okay, if you look up the word charge, you're going to see the word tax. All right. 
if you are in the private, you are not taxed. If you are in debt, that is slavery. Slavery and debt are the same term. Okay, if Ooh. you're in debt, you're a slave. God All right. Damn. So if you and now you were told not to go into debt in your Bible, and everybody did. Now here's the thing: they only tax seven different type of entities. They tax a trust, a corporation, a company, an estate an association, a partnership, and what is called an individual. The word individual in law is a legal term. It does not, it means an organization. It doesn't mean what you think it means in contemplation of the law. So the only way that you can interact in the public and not be taxed is by a private trust. That's why all the most powerful people who y'all keep complaining about aren't paying taxes or anything like that. They understand how to arrange their affairs in such a way where they can avoid paying taxes, not evade. So, this is, it, so, so, so what you guys are all telling me right now is you, you can clearly see why the black community is fucked up. As I can tell you this right now, what you're all telling me is. We should be raising our kids with this knowledge so that they may be able to navigate this matrix, right? This legal matrix. What's the difference between uh, legal terms with capital letters and small letters? Because apparently that makes a big deal. What's the difference between a citizen spelled with a capital C and a citizen spelled with a lowercase c? Is there a difference? They didn't. The lowercase c didn't come in until the 14th Amendment. If you look at the Constitution, every word citizen before the 14th Amendment is all capital letters. After it, it's all lower, it's proper c, all noun, capital c, noun. and then it's all lowercase c. Yeah, it's a proper noun, a common noun. You, know, you got to know but, the rules of English grammar. <laughs> well, really? Grammar, yeah. <laughs> well, grammar, this is, this is how they get you. Grammar comes from glamour. Those two words Ooh. were literally the same before, <laughs> before the 1500s, <laughs> excuse me, before the 1700s, that. and they basically moved out glamour. Because I they, know some glamorous broads with gl shitty grammar. Yeah, glamour is just magical <laughs> you enchantment. You supposed to take me on a date, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it's come to know. Glamour. As long as you promise not to speak. <laughs> Okay. Glamour was literally ch enchantment by language. Go and, deeper. And this is wow. how they this is how they got you. So, so 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 tell us what the word license means. Go. You mean driver, I, I, driver's yeah, license? Just, just the word or, license. Well, it's permission. License is permission to licentiousness. Do something. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. Whereas you would have freedom or rights to do something, a license gives you permission privilege, to do it. Right. Privilege. And so What's the difference between privileges and rights? Well, privileges somebody gives to you, rights is yours by birth. Uh, ooh, privilege, privilege and, and right. My same children thing have liberty. a right to food, clothing, <laughs> and shelter. Okay, Jordan's steak and a penthouse. That's, <laughs> That's privilege. A privilege man. Real, real quick though, this is people need to understand the corporate, the the government as a corporation thing. This is not this is not a theory, a philosophy, or anything like that. It's an actual thing. You can go look up. The United States of America Inc. on the Delaware website. What? The the uh, file number for that. They act, there's actually two United States now. They just created one, another one in 19 in, in, excuse me in uh, 2008. But the first one, United States of America Inc. You go on the Delaware website and you type in and go into entity search and you type it in and the code. You can type in this code as well 2193946 and you will see the United States of America and it says it's a nonprofit corporation as well as the Federal Reserve Association, um, the CIA, which is not the Central Intelligence Agency, which most people think it is, it's the Central Intelligence Authority. The Internal Revenue Service is not that. Their legal corporate name is the Internal Revenue Tax and Audit Service. So when you're fighting these people, when you got all these sovereign people out here saying, I'm going to this department, I'm fighting this, and I'm sending my paperwork in, the, the, the way to, be, to, to get up, out of it is to release yourself from contracts. So the only way you have to, the only way you can do that though is dealing with a corporation legally. And so how most people do it, they'll say, "Oh, I'm going to send a letter to the Justice Department. I'm going to do this. I'm going to." You're not dealing with them as a corporation as they actually are. If I need, if I need to sue McDonald's, I can't just send a letter to a, a franchise McDonald's. I have to send it to who legally is accepting of. Uh, correspondence to McDonald's. You have to do the same thing with the United States or any type of government agency that's a corporation. That's how you have to get out of this. Man, let wow. me just say, man. Wow. This shit is incredible. When you get into what's really going on, just do right. Don't get in trouble. Just follow the rules. Right? All you motherfuckers is Cypher. Remember Cypher? Was that, was that the nigga who 
<laughs> who ratted out the, yes. the crew with the Matrix? In, in Matrix, yeah. I know this steak I ain't real. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know shit. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. I don't. I don't want to know. The, make me somebody important. <laughs> Fuck all you niggas. When we you, gotta take a quick break. We'll be back in two point two seconds. <laughs> wow. Yep. Let me just say, <laughs> do you see how important it is to control the flow of ideas? Mm -hmm. I don't ever want you to know this shit. Ever. You're not going to get <laughs> this show we're doing right now. You think you get this shit on some regular TV? You think they let me come on HBO and be like, yeah, this is, this is what the fuck is going down? Do you understand? Again, media is so powerful because it can't help but be education. It can't help of but teach you. Right. Of some, it can't, Nick, right. you understand what I'm saying? It can't help but educate. So, let's control the ideas. We control the ideas, we'll make being a slave sought after. Absolutely. Voluntary servitude. Slavery has fun. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Listen, listen, do you, uh, word magic. Word, work, and Worship come from the same shit, same root. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, you show your landlord, show me. the pharaoh, the king, as div uh, most people who think they're kings, they they have some claim of divine lineage, right? My, my lord, what is it that you require? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I have the divine right to rule. This is Marcus's turn to rule, right? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> right? It's some type of divine lineage, In right? In time, yeah. he shall be king. Right. <laughs> By the will of God, I sit on this throne. And none other, right? So my point that I'm making is, it, you're supposed to work for me. Because in working for me, you worship God. As I am his regent here on <laughs> earth. <laughs> right? <laughs> So again, now I'm listen. There's there's a television show. Go back. Uh, it's on Netflix. Maybe. Who is that green eyed nigga with the old English accent? Right. There's a television show called Downton Abbey. Oh, yeah. that's my show. Incredible show. Watch some shit some sometime, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Downton Abbey. Right. And on this show, right, they will describe a gentleman versus a commoner. Now, one of the long lost cousins is a male first in line because somebody died. And when that person died, the dowager princess going to lose all her money unless the, re the nearest related male, some, some dude who you know, I'm not even, he like a half cousin right. and the motherfucker was a dentist. He was a doctor, right? And... <laughs> He was, I don't even want to be a part of the royals. Fuck them. I, I don't want to do this. Right? And she was like, well, we're going to lose the money. If he doesn't come claim this seat as a duke, we lose the bread. So we got to pull this motherfucker in, and he got to marry you. And they sitting at the table treating him like shit because he's a doctor. He's a fucking commoner. He actually works. He's not a gentleman. A gentleman doesn't work. gentleman is a man of leisure. This is how they see... L royalty what was right. working what? the you fuck out of here leave that for the commoners exactly. but <laughs> we live in reverse nonsense clock in he's a good man if his <laughs> back is bent over <laughs> that'll let you know he provide for you slave you fucking slave <laughs> they have no idea of the rule they have no idea of the rule hey, listen i'm a i'm a reverse everything nigga meant god wow Royalty descends from God. Let's keep that. You, the queen will say, uh, we come from a royal line. Well, that line goes all the way back. And then all the mysteries of the Merovingian and Mary Magdalene, they created all these stories to justify being able to sit on a throne. And they tell you, you're a subject to them. Isn't it, wouldn't it be, though, that slavery is a mentality and that royalty is a mentality? Speak. Yes, come. Isn't it that, that really there, that it really doesn't matter about money? Is that 
the people who have money, they know how to create it with their mind. And it, it isn't about thinking and growing rich, not working hard and grow rich. Could it be that the wealthy and the powerful elite know how to focus their mind and yes. utilize their thought process? Do I don't think it's way. just a question of focus, though. But, no, 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 it's not just a question no, of focus. Right. You don't Absolutely. think focus? Not it's not a, but it's also, a question. Then, but it's also an obfuscation of knowledge. Yes. I do not Absolutely. want okay. you motherfuckers to get any semblance of what I know. Exactly. Because if, if, if we that. give you if that. we give you what we know. Well, we live in the age of information now. Wouldn't you say that everything, nothing's hidden anymore? No, no it, it, it's, no, it's, it's, everything it's is a there. Plan. It's out there. It's, it's out there. But they, it's hit, they, they have tricked you into believing one thing means this and the other thing means that. So if you take that. That's then hiding. They, yeah. Yeah. They, they, well, 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 they put two things in front of you and then. You base your mind basically goes off goes off on the tangent. You think one thing is this, and they and well, they, how do you, they've how told do you, you, they've they've told you one thing is the other thing, but you don't believe you don't believe. It. Like if you can go look up driver, but, but you can go look up driver. You can look up all this shit. Yeah, look up all this right. shit and understand what it is. But because you take the everyday definition Face of what a driver it. is, that's your fault. That's not their fault. Okay, so <laughs> listen, so I was let me tell you this. I was sitting at a at a restaurant with a group of friends, and I was talking to this sister, and nigga. The energy of desperation, loneliness. Thirst. <laughs> what, you could cut that shit with an eyelash, <laughs> nigga. Like, this shit is thick up in here, nigga. <laughs> ah! Right? This shit was all over. And then I said to her, I said, what type of man do you want? He got to be godly. And then I said, what's your definition of godly? Well, he has to be of the Christian faith. No disrespect to Christianity, no disrespect to Islam, any other religion. The point is, I said, do you know that you limit the amount of good men that can come to you? I don't want nothing but this type. Brainwashed, socialized condition. Bam. Period. <laughs> I said, but do you, you do know that there are successful interfaith relationships yeah. where a Christian woman, well, I don't want to be unequally yoked, who gave you that idea? Did you challenge it? What does yoke mean? It doesn't mean you're supposed to have the same ideas. What if you have what if you have differing ideas? Take the interfaithful relationship that is successful. What are they yoked to? The idea or the spiritual energy? She, Which one? Should she be asking for a specific type of man, or should she be praying to God to be happy and let God bring her? But man but do you see what happy? I mean by conditioning? I, I the point that. I'm saying is yeah. they're conditioned, mm -hmm. and and if you have a belief system that is unchallenged in your life, it makes your decisions, not you. Absolutely, Jeff. Uh, the concept of of just just on a tangent of uh, praying for God to make you happy or or praying for God to send you a man, uh, God will send you shit that you ain't nowhere near ready for if you ask for it. You have to ask for the right shit because God, the, 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 uh, the God I pray to is not in any book, but he's very, he's, he's technical, he's very specific. You have, to, you have to watch what you pray for. And so many of watch us- Watch what you pray for, it's heavy. What, you know? for, <laughs> what, 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 what so many of us have been led to pray for is shit to gird us up as slaves, uh, 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 to make my slavery uh. easier, to make my slavery more convenient, wow. to make my slavery more productive. comfortable. Yes, All of it. yes. Uh, I was. I did a. I did a, su a summit for the NAACP with Kevin Powell. Shout out to him, Kevin Powell. Yeah, this dude said something that had me in tears. He said, uh, "Who here has seen a successful black man?" And a bunch of people raised their hand. He said, how many of you have been to Africa? Keep your hands up. Uh, all the hands in the room went down except a couple. He said that all of you that put your hands down have no idea what a successful black man looks like. You are, when you see a successful black man in America, you are looking at a bastardized version of a successful white man. Uh, you, none of you know what it's like to kill the animal that will feed your village. None of you know any of your successful customs. You are under <laughs> these successful customs. And unless and until you can wrap your brain around the fact that you are playing a game that is like uh, the way Dr. Sebi puts it, you are eating food that was not intended for you. <laughs> no matter how healthy it is, no matter how healthy the steak is, a fucking chicken ain't supposed to be eating it. So, 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 Kev, 
References. What books? Yeah. What websites? Get some books, nigga. Where, 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 where's the, what's the first shit we should study in order to get to this it's space? A Black's Law Dictionary. Fourth edition fourth or th sixth edition? Fourth edition is the best edition. Sixth edition is good. Fifth edition, pretty much to me, any anyone before seven. Why a Black's Law Dictionary? Because it has the case law in it. Interesting. So you can look it up. I would say that everybody should read their state constitutions. Absolutely. All right. If you haven't read your state constitution, you don't know anything. I would say also wow. to go to RadioHighFrequency.com because we have Common Law Trust Book. I'm going to give you a reference. <laughs> and other resources, Law Redemption in Court, um, uh, Creditors and Their Bonds, a lot of documents that you can get that will help you on your way of learning this information. And last, I'm going to put a book out there. Uh, by an associate of mine. It is called The Art of Passing Bucks. It is on private trust. Hmm. Her name is Gwen Wyckoff. She's a professional at, uh, at trust. And you can get her at passingbucks.com. You can go to her website. But it is, uh, you will not find any books like the books I'm talking about out there anywhere in the general public. Wow. Also, also, they can, you want to look up the Public Tax Act. Uh, I think it's 1935. You want to look up uh, the Buck Act. And you also want to look up the Banking Act. And these are the things that basically these acts placed you into slavery or contract slavery. These are crazy. Systematically. Crazy. We're we going right to the uh, final thought. Is that what we're doing? What are we doing? We're taking a break. We're going to take a break. And then when we come back, we're going to have a final thought, man. Crazy. Excellent. There are two kinds of law on the earth, as I've said. One is called civil law, which is the law of the land. And one is called maritime admiralty, which is called the law of water. Uh, the Maritime Admiralty is banking law. And the law on the Maritime Admiralty says that you, because you came out of your mother's water, are a Maritime Admiralty product. This is why the ship is sitting in its berth and it's tied to the dock and the captain has to give a certificate of manifest to the port authorities because money is changing hands. This is why when you were born, you have to have a birth certificate you are a maritime admiralty product and therefore your birth certificate is signed by your mother and where your mother signed on the birth certificate get it you will see it does not say parent or mother it says informant your mother was informing the, the, the bank that she has just produced another product to be bought and sold. England, the British Crown through international banking owns your physical body and that's the law. And if you could get your original birth certificate back, you would find that on the back of the birth certificate are all the banks around the world. All over the world, banks have used your birth certificate because you are a stock and a maritime admiralty banking scheme where you make money for banks. Consequently, the corporation and government, people who want to control you, they create a second you, and that second you that they control, that they created, is all capital letters. Check it out. Anytime you get a bill, you get a lawsuit, you get a fine, a ticket, somebody sends you a bill from the Department of Water Power, Check it out on your driver's license, on your social security card, on your insurance card, anything, period, anything having to do with business, your name will always be all capital letters because only all capital letters can be dealt with by banks and government. Anytime you have a name upper or lower case, I have a better price to you, I've got no control of you. You sign a contract in which your name is in all capital letters, now I can take it for Well, 
We scratched a scab today. That's all we did. We scratched a scab. I'm trying to, listen, I'm trying to put us in a position, right, to where we challenge everything that we think is normal. If you live in a capitalist society, an idea will pollute every aspect of your existence in America. Capitalism is an idea, right? <laughs> it affects your ability to relate. So we had a question. Why? Why are all these young men, African-American young men, right? 50% of the population of prison. Only 6% of the population of the United States in America. Why do we always get sent to jail? Why are our sentences longer? Why are they more harsh, right? And we understand that racism is a part of the political propaganda agenda to keep people disaggregate and separated. We understand that. Racism keeps poor white trash who make up the higher percentage of the people on welfare from uniting with black people who are in the same economic bracket. <laughs> right? We're going to keep them separated because we're going to make even the poor white people think they better than the, the, the niggas who got the same shit and <laughs> the wick checks and, and, and cheese. And <laughs> we're going we gonna to make sure that they, they got the same shit. They're in the same economic plight, but we're going to make one feel like he's better than the other. Racism is part of the matrix. You got 1% who operate like the gods of the earth. They've got the real esoteric spiritual knowledge because by the time you get to yoga class, right, <laughs> over here on Melrose somewhere, you're, you, right, you're cut off from the original spiritual intent of it, right? The spiritual intent of it was to elevate you up that spinal column, <laughs> open up the caduceus and become one with God. But be, uh, I, f I felt really good today. It was... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right? We missed the whole purpose of why it's here. Again, why? Because they police knowledge. They police information. You so happy to get your dog a tag, you kind of overlook the fact that they're preparing a human dog tag called an RFID. Then they make it cool. Your dog can't get lost, neither can you. Well, this is great. Let's. What if I want to get lost? But do you see what I'm saying? Shouldn't wanting to get lost be a part of your privilege as a human being? Part of your right? I have a right to want to get lost. No, no, you belong to us. You're chattel. That's what government is about. It's a limiter. You look up the word governor. And I'm, I always tell you, go get your etymological dictionaries. Right? Oxford has one. What's that app? There's an app you could get. I got it on here. Oh, it's just etymology. Yeah, the one with the leaf that has a W on it. Get the etymology app. I always say the word wrong and, you know, stumble over it and be like, that nigga making mistakes. <laughs> Shut your dumb ass up. I'm introducing you to some shit your punk ass never knew existed anyway. Etymology. I can say it. It's an app. Download it. It'll help you define words, right? We never claim to be the, the rightest motherfuckers in the world. We're not. But we're going to bring ideas. We're going to challenge you. Listen, we got the wrong idea about slavery. We do. It ain't just Kunta Kente in them. There's a governmental form of slavery. And I've told people this. If you can sit there and say a brother who's been in jail for 15 years is institutionalized, what about a career student who's been in the universities? Those are institutions too. What about your unwavering desire to have the standard perfect Super Bowl championship relationship called marriage? That's an institution too. What if you never do the research and find out that monogamy isn't really real for women or men? Scientifically speaking, right? This is why women cheat in between. They find a little crack in between their beliefs, right? That's all they need is a crack in between the belief. <laughs> women date ideas, right? 
we, we when I fucked with him, we wasn't together then. <laughs> it was all legal, nigga. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? Because they fuck ideas. I fucked Bobby Brown while he was on tour. <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? This is how they got us set up. This is why, listen, I'm going to tell you the greatest terrorist act that could ever happen is organization. The 1% the are organized. They control all the information. They control all the knowledge, which is the real power. They got niggas running after debt, debt tickets, killing each other over debt tickets. A dollar is debt. Every time they get it from a private corporation that's owned by some private folk around the world, every time they print up a dollar, there's an APR attached to it. <laughs> it's debt. I'm going to live good, though. Dumbasses. So sick of niggas. <laughs> I'm so thick, sick of the thug, the intellectual, classy thug, the clatchet, the classy ratchet. I went to school. I got a job. Right? The thug, the hard, unconscious God. I want niggas to be niggas. The imperial royal beings that were first spawned on planet Earth to represent humanity. That's who I want to return. That's why we have these kind of conversations. Go do the research. Go study. Go get some books. Go learn. Challenge everything that's supposed to be normal. Made fucking slavery comfortable, desirable. These motherfuckers are masters. Masters of illusion. All right, I say this, and that's my final thought. Uh, Pre-order that book. Please pre-order the relationship dismount. This is why I start with relationships, because we, once we heal our relationships, we can start participating with each other again in a respectful manner. Go to imzowilliams.com, pre-order your copy of the relationship dismount. It will be available July 1st, 2015. It's coming. It's... I'm so excited about it. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, real quick. Kevin, where can they find you? Booty Boxing Home System, uh, udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y.com, slash Booty Boxing. Promo code is Zo What Show. Also, YouTube, uh, Real Nagas. That's R-E-E-L-N-A-G-A-S. Check it out. Yusuf. Just Google or YouTube Yusuf L. I'll pop up. But my blog talk is blogtalkradio.com forward slash high frequency. Or you can come to our website at radiohighfrequency.com. Excellent stuff. Jeff Brown. YouTube, Google, Instagram, <laughs> uh, uh, Ter Periscope. Jeff Brown, at GB Funny Style. Chris is hooking my shit up. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. By the way, my son went to college last week. He had a Woo! great first week. All right. We're excited All about right. this brother here. Yeah. And, and, and I cleaned up his room and found $800. No, 34 <laughs> copies of The Rebirth of Seeds. Wow. If you want your hand-signed copy, go to I Am Zo Williams right now. Order it right now. I'll mail it out to you ASAP. Ha hand sign the last 34 copies of The Rebirth of Seeds, which is my first book. Go do that. We need those pre-orders to jump up as well. The books are coming. Let's get at it. I'll see you next week with another barn burner. You know what I do. Holla. <laughs>